Calling All Cars, the copyrighted program created for the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling All Cars, attention All Cars, broadcast five. Regarding a man wanted for murder. Description later. Rolls and clerk. Several years you have been hearing the statement that more police and emergency cars are powered with Rio Grande cracks wherever it is sold than any other gasoline. Year after year, this statement is true. Can you ask for a more convincing testimonial? The competition is intense, yet no gasoline has yet been made that will outperform Rio Grande cracks. That's why, year in, year out, the leading cities and countries, wherever Rio Grande cracks is sold, Select this gasoline above all others. They have yet to find any gasoline which is quicker to start, which accelerates as fast, which is as speedy and powerful. If Rio Grande cracked gasoline performs so superbly in these emergency cars, obviously it will give better performance in your car, too. If you are one of the many who think all gasolines are much alike, we challenge you to try a tank full of police car performance. Hundreds of thousands of motors have accepted this challenge and have discovered that Rio Grande Cracked has remarkable features which other gasolines lack. You can expect unusual performance from your car when you change to Rio Grande Cracked gasoline. And now is the time to change. Good evening, friends. I doubt if the respectable citizens listening to this broadcast have any idea of the brutal methods used by lawbreakers in their illegal extortion of money. During the Prohibition era, some mighty tough characters developed among the bootleggers, and the cold-blooded shooting and torture you will hear on this program are typical of their heartless and brazen methods. It is a tribute to the efficiency of your police that practically all of these cold-blooded killers of the bootlegger era have been tracked down and are now paying the penalty for defying society. It still amazes me that modern racketeers continue to think they can get away with it, when the record shows so plainly that every, every one of these tough guys is eventually caught by the police and punished. Our policemen, on their daily rounds, are in constant danger of being shot and killed. But as you will soon hear, the crook who attacks a police officer can never escape. Every law enforcement officer in the land joins in the hunt, and we always get our man. Tonight, we have selected the story of the killing of Deputy Sheriff Cookie Vihar for this episode of Calling All Cars. The story goes back to the middle of November 1932 for its beginning. The activities of the Los Angeles Police Department had made business bad for the bootlegger, and Raleigh McAllister, a petty whiskey peddler, and his friend James Rogan, a sailor bootlegger, are discussing the situation. Can I tell you, Jim, it's getting tougher and tougher. Yeah, I know, Mac. The feds are clamping down so you can't get it in off the boat, and Davis's gang down at City Hall slap you down when you try to sell the stuff you make yourself. Yeah, it's tough, all right. You got another drink there? Yeah, here you are. Now, that's good stuff. That's the good you've been selling. Think I'm crazy? This is real whiskey. I wouldn't wash my feet in that stuff I peddle. <laughs> I don't blame you. When I had a territory up north, I boiled up the same poison for the suckers. Well, we gotta get some dough someplace. This is getting tough. You got any ideas? Well, like I was telling you the other night, there ought to be a lot of dough in Blackie McKnight's joint down there on 7th Street. Their take on the tables every night must be a couple of grand. Yeah, but I don't like the idea of a stick-up job. It ain't in my line. You got duck fever. No, it ain't that. But I always run my business respectable. 
I've been an honest bootlegger, and I don't like the idea of breaking the law that way. Well, there ain't no dough in being an honest bootlegger anymore. You ought to know that yourself. Yeah. Well, it won't hurt the case, the joint. Let's go down tonight. Blackie's a cagey guy. You think we can get in? Sure. I got a card I borrowed. Now, we'll go down in that shirt sleeves, and they won't suspect nothing. Okay. You got any dough? Yeah, about a C. Well, we'll need it. We're going to have to spend a little before we can get the lay of that joint. All right, you ready? Right. Let's have another drink before we go. Okay. Sorry, boys, I can't let you in. We got a card, ain't we? Yeah, you got a card. And it's got your signature on it, ain't it? Yeah, that's just it. I never saw you boys in my life. I never made out this card to you. Look here, we got a card and we're coming in. No, you're not. Not until I make sure you're on the up and up. This card's made out to Tom Walsh. You him? No, I'm not. He's a friend of mine. You call him up and tell him Jim Rogan's down here. He'll tell you I'm okay. Uh, All right. You guys will have to wait outside, though. Okay. Sure is a cagey guy. He's got a lot of cash in this joint, and he ain't taking any chances. Ever been here before? No. But I got an idea it'll be a cinch to knock over. Looks like there's only one way out, and this is it. Looks that way. This guy got a very big mob hanging around? Not that I know of. I understand it's just himself and a couple of dealers and a bartender. Dealers will all be gone by the time we come back with the heaters. Maybe we'll have to pull a job without ever getting in first. Nah. Tom will okay me. Yeah, if he's home. Well, we'll know pretty quick. Like he's coming back now. Well, what about it? Okay, boys. Tom says you're all right. What do we tell you? Well, you know how it is, boys. You can't afford to take no chances in this business. Yeah. deck you got there, mister. Pipe down. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, might as well. He's got all my dough. Listen, Steph, we'll come back in a while and take it from him. It's a soft spot to stick yeah. up. Yeah, I'll get that dough I lost and a lot more. Sure you will. Don't shoot off your face now. We'll talk later with a pair of cats. Okay, let's go. Well, tough luck, boys. Yeah. You'll do better next time. Yeah, I think we will. <laughs> And in the early hours of the same morning, Deputy Sheriff Cookie Bihar drops into Blackie's place looking for a suspect. Hello, Cookie. Oh, Blackie. Come to make a pinch, Cookie? No, not this time, Blackie. Just looking for a guy, that's all. Oh. Nobody here now, Cookie. Except Mike, the bartender, and one of the girls. Yeah? Well, I think I'll come in anyway. Okay, Cookie. Cookie, what did I tell you? Yeah. Who's in the back room? Nobody. I'll take a look. Okay, Cookie. You go ahead. I got to answer the door. Oh, uh, have a drink on the house, Cookie. Not when I'm working. Oh. Hello, boys. Back again. Looks like it, don't it? Yeah, we got some more dough. Let us in. Okay. Came back to get back the dough we lost. Where's the blackjack game? Game's all over for tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we came back for the dough. You lost it, didn't you? No. We had it lifted off us by your crooked card. What are you welching about? You lost the dough and that's that. Yeah? Well, we're getting that dough back. Now, put up your hands. Hey, what's going on in here? You too, Mr. Reach. Now, all of you, over to the side. Now, come on, you behind the bar. All right. Now, sit down on the floor. Me too? No, you can sit on the feet. Hey, over there. Only I take off your shoes. Hey, you better watch what you're pulling, fella. Cookie here is a deputy sheriff. Yeah? Well, that's just dandy. How do you like looking at the wrong end of a cat, mister? Don't worry me none when there's a yellow rat on the other end. Yeah, you better watch your lip or I'll put a slug to it. Hey, where are you going? I'm getting out. I don't want to get mixed up in nothing. Yeah? You're staying right here until this little party's over. Ouch! You're hurting my arm. 
Oh, now, Blackie, my boy, where'd you keep that dough? There ain't no dough here. We come back for that dough we lost. Yeah, and any more that's hanging around. Well, there ain't any here. Come on, Blackie, come clean. Listen, boys, I don't know nothing about this dough. I just work here. Oh, you're lying, Blackie. Hey, don't do that. Here's another. Oh, now, where's that dough? Listen, I tell you, God's honest truth, I ain't got no dough. You got those matches, Mac? Yeah, yeah. Here they are. Hold up his feet, Mac. Maybe these will make you talk, Blackie, huh? Oh, boys, now look. Don't do that. Please, boys. Stop your waggler. Oh, oh. All right, Jim. Hold his feet up. Now, how about it, Blackie? Where's the dough? I tell you, I ain't got that. Oh! oh. You oh. sure about that, pal? No, I ain't got it. Where is it? Oh! Oh! Partner's got it. Jaime's got it. Oh, let him go. Please let him go. You're killing him. He'll live the rat. Dodge. What's the matter, Jim? I know you burned my finger. Come on, Blackie, you're lying. Where's the dough, Blackie? Oh! Come on, you muck. Let up. He doesn't know where it oh, is. Oh, shut up, Flatfoot. Your turn's next. Yeah? Yeah. Now, come on, Blackie. Tell Papa where the dough is. Oh, stop it, Jim. That dick's got a gun. <laughs> Dirty rat. Put him around on me. Oh, you killed him. Oh, you killed him. Stop your yapping. Stop your yapping. He ain't dead yet, but he got my pal all right, right through the heart. Well, Mac, old boy, I guess you won't be needing this gat anymore where you're going. And I may find use for it. Hey, you. Who, me? Yeah, you. Hold me a cab. Oh, all right. Now, no funny business. I said a cab and not the police. Well, how are your feet, Blackie? <laughs> oh. Don't burn me again, will you? I haven't told you the truth. I ain't got the dough. Okay, Blackie. I got more important business now. I got to get myself out of here. The cab will be here in a minute. Thanks. Oh, you're wounded. I sure I am. What of it? Well, can I bandage it for you or something? No, you can't. I don't want any of your help. Do you realize that you shot a police officer? They'll be looking for you everywhere now. Oh, well, what of it? You keep your mouth shut and you'll be safe. If that dick hadn't started blazing away, there wouldn't have been any shooting. And my pal would still be alive. I got a good mind to finish that... Blackfoot right off now. Don't cause any more trouble. Blackie, you're the scariest guy I ever knew of in this racket. Well, maybe I am, but don't bump off, Cookie. He's a good guy. Okay, Blackie. I'm probably going to bump off anyway, so I'll leave you here to watch it. Only, Blackie, if you love your life, keep your mouth shut. So long. Rogan drives away in the cab. The bartender calls the police. A few moments later, Detectives Con Dapper and Ryan of the Homicide Squad, arriving on the heels of the ambulance, are investigating the scene of the crime. Yeah, what's it look like to you, Doctor? Well, I doubt if he has a chance. Ah, oh, poor Cookie. Stabbing right up to the last. He's a rough hombre, that Cookie. Well, do everything you can for him, Doctor. You can bet we will. Now, any of you people know who this guy was that did the shooting? I never saw him before. He had somebody else's card. I, I phoned and checked on him, and he said he was okay. You don't know what his name was, eh? No, I don't. He did tell me his name, but I forgot it. I heard this one here that said call him Regan or Rogan or something like that. When was that? Well, when they were in earlier in the evening. Rogan. Rogan. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here's his name in this dead guy's notebook. That's him, all right. Rogan. Jim Rogan. Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast number 70. You're on the lookout for following this drive man wanted for robbery and attempt murder. One James Sidney Rogan. He drives American, 5 feet 10 inches, 165 pounds. Blue eyes, dark chestnut hair. Age 32 years. Nose flattened and large nostrils. This man shot and seriously wounded Deputy Sheriff Payhar during a holdup on West 7th Street early this morning. Search of Rogan's apartment reveals a phone bill, among the items of which are several calls to a Bakersfield number. Bakersfield police are asked to trace down this clue. They call at the address where the phone is located. It is a well-known resort. Hello, Amy. Hello, Bert. What you doing down this way? Oh, just paying a call. Anything wrong, Bert? No, everything's okay. 
Come on, spill it. I never come down here unless there's some trouble. Any of your girls been getting any calls from L.A.? When? Oh, recently. I don't check on them that close. They got a lot of calls. Yeah, I know, Amy, but you might know if one of the girls got, say, six calls from L.A. in a month. Might. Well, then, what's her name? She ain't here anymore. Where is she? She left for L.A. yesterday on the bus. Yeah? Yeah. What was her name? Mabel's the name she went by here. Mabel what? Just Mabel. What'd she look like? Blonde. Young? Oh, 22 or 3. Where'd she go in L.A.? How should I know? Did she ever call L.A.? I don't know that either. Why not? It's a pay phone, you dummy. Look for yourself. Yeah, that's right. Well, the phone company will have a record on that. A check with the telephone company in Bakersfield leads to the apartment of Nick Charters, a petty bootlegger. Con Dapper and Ryan visit the apartment and find Charters and Mabel there. They arrest them on a technical charge of suspicion of murder and bring them in for questioning. Hour after hour, Charter stoutly protests his ignorance of the whole affair. And then... I don't know what you got me here for. I don't know nothing about it. Rogan's a friend of yours, isn't he? No. He's a friend of your girl's, isn't he? No. He isn't cheating on you, is he? Oh, no. Why? Well, Rogan called her up in Bakersfield six times last month. He, he did not. Did you call her six times? Yes, Lord. Where from? Rogan's apartment? No. Then she's kidding you. Because we know somebody called her from Rogan's apartment six times last month. Oh, come on, Charters. We know all about it. Let's not waste any more time. Come on. Tell us all you know. I don't know nothing. Oh, no, yes, you do. Now, look here, Nick. We know you weren't in on the shooting. But we also know Rogan went right to your place after the shooting. Well, how do you know that? That's right, isn't it, Charters? Well, yes. All right. Let's have the rest of it. Well, he came over and told me what had happened. Was he wounded? Yeah. Where? Well, in the chest and in the leg. What'd you do with him? Well, he wanted to get out of town, so so after he'd uh, we'd uh, laid low a couple of days, he was uh, well enough to travel, so we took him to San Francisco. What address there? Well, I dropped him in front of the ferry building. Is that the truth, Charter? Yes, yeah, on the level. He said something about having relatives there, so I said goodbye to him and came on home. That's all I know about it, honest. You ain't got nothing on me. I didn't have nothing to do with it. Can I go now, huh? Yeah, Nick. Can I go? Yeah, you can go. And the trail ends at the ferry building in San Francisco. Although Rogan's relatives are watched by the San Francisco police, there is apparently no communication with Rogan. The earth seems to have swallowed him up. Descriptions of the killer are sent to police departments all over the world. In Balboa, in the Panama Canal Zone, a suspect answering Rogan's description is arrested. Fingerprints from Los Angeles reveal him to be the wrong man. The Oregon State Police hold a suspect. A checkup reveals their man to have a missing finger. He is released. Rogan is reported recuperating in a hunting resort near Reading. The sheriff of Shasta County investigates the place and finds nothing. A girlfriend of Rogan's is discovered in San Diego. She claims she hasn't seen Rogan in a year, but she admits if she didn't know where he was, she wouldn't tell for fear of what he would do to her. Rogan is reported down for Hawaii. The chief of police of Honolulu combs the red light district of Avalai. And find nothing. So for months, the fruitless manhunt drags on. Clue after clue is followed, leading nowhere. Behar's brother offices of the sheriff's office raise a fund of five hundred dollars and offer it for Raven's capture. The detective magazines print Rogan's picture and description in their show-up department. Have an amateur detectives the nation over on the lookout for the killer. Corinth, Mississippi. Howdy, stranger. What can I do for y'all? Fill her up. Yes, sir. Reckon y'all come some distance from the looks of your car. Maybe I have. Are you going far? Maybe. Well, there you are. How much? That'll be 168. Oh, here you are, two bucks. 
Uh, just a minute. I'll get your change. Oh, keep it. I'm in a hurry. Well, I'll be doggone if it ain't. Martha? Martha? Yes? Bring me that detective book. Martha, I do think we all seen $500 flying down the road. Yes, sir. Here he is. Who's talk then? Why, that fellow that just bought gas. James Sidney Rogan. Wanted. Dead or alive. Well, what's his license number? Uh, his what? His license number. Oh, Martha, I didn't get it. <laughs> And you call yourself a detective. Well, just the same. I'm going to write to the chief of police in Los Angeles. He ought to know about this. And in Milford, Connecticut, the editor of the local newspaper has a short order cook in a dining car under suspicion. Let <clears throat> me have a donut, too, huh? Coming up. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, uh, say, you might give me some butter. Hey, uh, just put it on the coffee sauce there, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Hey, uh, you ain't been here long, have you? No, a couple weeks. Where'd you come from? Worked over in Jersey City. Yeah? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, ever been west? Oh, no further west than Newark. Huh. California is a great country, they tell me. Yeah, I guess it is. Sure is, from all I can hear. Oh, uh, say, could I have some more coffee? Sure. Oh, oh sorry, I stuck my finger in that butter. Uh, wait, I'll, I'll get a clean coffee. <laughs> no, 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 that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> you know, that's a silly habit I got when I was a kid, smearing butter around a saucer like that. Oh, I'll get you a clean one. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Say, uh, you don't mind if I drink this over the office, do you? We're going to press soon, I guess I better get back. It's okay with me. Uh, just leave a dime deposit. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. There you are. Carefully preserving the fingerprinted coffee saucer in his ice box, the amateur detective editor writes Chief Davis for Rogan's fingerprint and finds to his chagrin that his suspect has probably been telling the truth about never being west of Newark. At least he is not Rogan. So months pass. And Rogan remains at large. And then one day, Inspector Davidson of the homicide detail calls Con Dapper and Ryan into his office. Well, here's the letter I thought would uh, interest you boys. Yeah, what's it about? Rogan. Well, let's see it. Hey, listen to this. Do you really intend paying $500 reward for the information leading to the arrest of Rogan? Because if you do, I can tell you where to find him. Just write me, care of General Delivery, San Francisco. Uh, probably another one of those nuts. Well, what did you do about it? Well, I wrote and told him the reward, the reward absolutely would be paid. And we'll see what comes of it. Following up this latest clue, San Francisco officers, working under the direction of Chief of Detective Charles Delea of the San Francisco Police Department throws a stakeout on the house pointed out to them. Seeing Rogan enter and leave the place several times on the night of October 11th, 1933, they close in on the place. Open up. Now we'll have to break it open. The men all posted around the house? Yeah. All right, let's bear down. Let's see. Remember your gas. You may need it. I already have. Throw your flashlight this way. Well, he's not in there. No, I'm not in here. Now, wait a minute. What? I just heard a sound down the hall here. Look, the door's closed. All right, let's open it. You hear him? Yeah. Come on out of there. I'll give you three, and then I'll shoot through the door. One. Two. Okay, let's get on, Thomas. Ah, hello, Rogan. We're mighty glad to see you. Well, I ain't glad to see you. I right, don't suppose so. If you'd have come until you later, you'd never have had me. Yeah, how's that? Well, if lamb and well, you'd never got me. Well, we figured we'd better pay your call pretty soon. Yeah? Well, how about it, Rogan? 
Are you ready to talk about that job down in L.A.? Yeah, I'll talk. Let's get out of here. I'll talk as soon as we get to headquarters. But attorney was waiting for Rogan at headquarters, and on his advice, Rogan refused to talk. Lieutenant Ryan went to San Francisco a couple of days later and brought Rogan back to face trial. A speedy trial was scheduled and successfully prosecuted by Deputy District Attorneys Grant Cooper and George Stallman. Rogan's attorney tried to enter a plea of guilty to murder in the first degree in exchange for a life sentence, but the prosecution refused this move, and on December the 5th, Rogan was found guilty of murder in the first degree with no recommendation for clemency. On December the 15th, 1933... Rogan was given the death penalty by Judge Fletcher Boren. He was sent to San Quentin in February 1934 and fought his hanging. But on February the 8th, 1935, he was hanged by the neck until dead. Thank you, Captain Wallace. Hundreds of thousands of boys and girls have joined the Rio Grande Junior Police Department. These junior G-men are outfitted with uniform belts, pistol and holster, handcuffs, fingerprint outfits, genuine metal police badges, and many other items of equipment, all given away absolutely free by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Ask your independent neighborhood Rio Grande cracked gasoline dealer how you can oil company. Ask your independent neighborhood Rio Grande cracked gasoline dealer how you can get these free gifts. All over America, hundreds of thousands of gasoline service stations are now warning motorists to Sinclair Eyes for summer. As warm weather comes, your car needs entirely different lubrication. Your motor oil, for example, should be of an entirely different grade. But every car is different, so we can't tell you here what oil to use. Your Rio Grande cracked gasoline dealer can tell you, for he has the latest information flashed from the factory that made your car, telling exactly what grade of oil and lubricant should be used on every part and what changes should be made as your car grows older. Sinclair is one of the world's largest manufacturers of lubricants. Take your car wherever Rio Grande cracked gasoline is sold, and you'll get expert scientific lubrication when you Sinclairize for summer. Welcome to police calling auto cars, sentinel auto cars, a cancellation broadcast by. Expect this case is now in custody. That's all. Rolls and put. This is Frederick Lindsley bidding you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. <laughs> 